headwind, no crosswind, we can go either way. So we're going to try this to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a normal climb, to do a normal departure climb. Uh, no flaps, it would be at the point at which we've already taken care of our flaps. Uh, we've kind of done it. And uh, we're going to do it. And we're going to do a left turn all the way to north as a power off glide. Let's what happens. So we are at, let's get up to 1,000. So now bring our prop full, bring our fuel pump on. Rich and get bark line. And one, two, three, four, five. Best glide and make that turn. On. Mixture is rich. Maps to the takeoff position. And we're going to climb, basically, we're going to climb to pattern altitude. Then make the turn. Solace of traffic, Diamond 226 Papa Alpha, departing runway 4. We'll be doing a simulated engine out after takeoff. Tower City. Five hundred. Oh, wow. South City traffic, Diamond 226 Papa Alpha, runway 22, short final, Siler City.
what does this mean? On this day, in these calm, almost no wind conditions, this airplane was able to accomplish a simulated 270 degree turn back at altitude with a loss of only 700 feet. Adding a 50% buffer to this number worked well in a simulation from pattern altitude. It does not mean we will get these results on another day, in different conditions, or with a different airplane. And remember, we did this at idle power with a rotating prop, not a complete engine failure. The aerodynamics aside, we knew we had power if we needed it. At best, it gives us more knowledge of our airplane's performance and an indication of how successful we might be if landing straight ahead is not a viable option. This was not a complete description of turn back maneuver training. For instructors and their clients, I highly recommend Brian Schiff's monograph, Engine Failure After Takeoff in a Single Engine Airplane. Safe Flying and Safe Learning.